Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've been waiting for, a podcast for podcasters. This is Creating the Greatest Show, and I'm your host, Casey Cheshire. Join me as we interview podcast hosts and investigate the ingredients of a successful interview podcast. We'll talk mistakes, earned skills, powerful questions, and more. This show is sponsored by Ringmaster, completely done for you, B2B podcast production. I can't wait to introduce you all to the guest today. He is an absolute badass. He is someone I've known for quite a bit. And we've actually, um, we've met, we've hung out, we've swapped messages. And sure enough, we got connected again for this show. And so I'm excited about it. Well, who is he, Casey? Who is he? Stop opining about it. Just tell me who he is. He's an entrepreneur, a leader, a thought leader, a speaker, presenter, an expert in the topics of people management and HR. Very important things these days. Interesting fact, a licensed private investigator and the host of Good Morning HR every Thursday is when that drops. President at Imperative Information Group, Mike Coffey. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks, Casey. I appreciate it. How you been? I've been good. I've been good. It's a Thursday. It's kind of dragging on, but this um, ghost energy drink here is, uh, I'm I'm trying it out. It's supposed to be the same flavor as Bubblicious Bubblegum, and it kind of is, which is scary, which is a scary thought. How about you? Takes me back to eighth grade. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still in, I'm still there, man. Still in eighth grade. I'm surviving the middle of com in the middle of conference season, so it's one, traveling from one conference to the next for September and October, and uh, but and putting out a podcast every week and running a company. It's uh, my deck's pretty full right now, but we're having a lot of fun. Uh, that's I mean that's the key part, right? If you're having fun, then you haven't quite you're not doing work. You're just doing fun, but yeah. every now and then it's work. Yeah. Yeah, um, every now and then, never, <laughs> every now and then it's working. Every now and then. Well, I'd love to start this thing off by asking you the question we ask everyone when they first come on here. Mike, pull back the curtain for us on your show and share your most important strategy for a great podcast. For me, it's it's preparation. Uh, my goal with the show is to make sure my guests get to shine and have a really good experience. And so what I really, yeah, I'm an HR guy. I've spent my entire career in it, and all our guests are talking about some relate something related to people management. Uh, but I need to be totally prepared for to make them look good, which means I've got to ask, you know, smart questions. And so I'll, I'll get out there. I'll look at other, you know, whatever they've written. If they have a website or they publish papers, I'll I'll go through that. Look at their YouTube videos, whatever it is. Or sometimes it's just the topic. Uh, we did a did a uh, episode with Kevin Lashes, who's an attorney out of Austin, on the mm-hmm. National Labor Relations Act uh, unionization trends uh, last week, and uh, spent about three or four hours that morning. And I've you know I've been in HR, I know all this stuff, but spent right. three or four hours up boning up to be ready to have a conversation that was uh, interesting to him. And showed him that I cared about the topic and and was investing the time to get ready for it. But also, it's important because sometimes my guests are so smart. If I'm not really prepared, they'll talk over my head and I will and, and my audience's head. And so I've really, you know, if I'm really well prepared, I can help get that conversation down from the you know the fifty thousand square foot you know fifty thousand foot level down to a thousand feet so that my audience, you know, which is mm. HR professionals at all levels in their, in their career, small business owners. I've got a lot of, you know, EO members and small business owners who are doing their own people management for the first yeah. time as the, you know, as their companies grow and they're trying to figure it out. So uh, if I'm prepared, I can, I can have that conversation where it's good for everybody. And so that's, that's where I spend a lot of time every week. How much time do you think you spend? Uh, for each episode, it's probably three or four hours uh, really? just on that on that top and just getting ready, just preparing for the yeah. conversation. So usually my uh, I've got I've got it scheduled out so that uh, primarily on Monday afternoons, although it doesn't always work that way. I've got the Monday afternoons blocked off for recording and I may do a couple of them on a Monday. But then that means that Monday morning is usually or the weekend I've blocked off time to uh, to make sure I'm ready for it. This is a fascinating, and this is what I love about this show is because we, we get a chance to step out of our industries for just a second and and talk about this mechanism that we've been using. And what I've learned is not everyone prepares the same or emphasizes the same amount. And, and 
you do some of the most research I, I've heard, and I'm fascinated by this. And it makes sense. You said you said this. It shows them that I care. That I cared yeah. enough to to read or learn or, or know where they're coming from. But tell me more about the idea that your guests are so smart and you're trying to get up to their level to prevent them from talking over you. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. It's they just depending on the topic, especially when you get into uh, leadership and those kind of softer topics. There are a lot of folks, and I, I really love the the guys who do a lot of of you know research in organizations, organizational development research, things like that. But often they can turn that into a statistics conversation, and it's way above the heads, uh, or and to the and it's above the heads. Maybe is not the right term. It's not as practical for mm. the for your frontline uh, HR manager or your business owner who's just trying to figure out the best practices for you know you know recruiting, selecting, and managing, incentivizing the best the best employees they can. And so if I'm prepared and I kind of understand what their research has been about and I, and I know what they're, you know, and I understand the practical aspects of it, then I can have steer the conversation, you know, in a way that shows that I get what you're talking about. And that's really great. Here's what I think. Here's how, is this how you would implement this in a, in a workplace yeah. or something like that? So it gets them kind of going down that track. Uh, but I think in order to do that, they have to have confidence that they don't have to explain it to me again. And my, my super skill, you know, my superhero ability is asking dumb questions of smart people. And so, you know, for them, it may be a dumb question, but for me, it was a question I didn't know to ask until a few hours before they're, you know, started doing research. So, and, you know, as humbling as that is, I, sometimes I find myself a caveman as well. Uh, But you're a, you're a well-researched caveman. So it's got to sound to your guests. Like you are, you're in the loop. Like you Maybe you don't you don't have the same PhD that they do in that one particular niche, but man, are you up to speed, right? So you're not oh, yeah. starting at zero. You're you're think you're like playing 3D chess with them, and you understand where they're probably going, and then you're steering them. That's very interesting. Well, and it helps that I attend, you know, probably a dozen or two dozen HR conferences a year. Sit through, right. you know, you know, dozens of hours of of sessions on all kinds of topics yeah. and spend a lot of time with them. I've got some amazing clients who are really, really bright. And so I get to spend a lot of time with them solving their people, you know, their people problems. And so most of it's not new. I just want to get into a, in order to really steer a really nuanced conversation for me personally, I have to be prepared. I just feel that that need to be prepared and I probably over-prepare, but it's also how I get better at what I do. I learn more along the way too. So I can help my clients because I've spent three hours, to, you know, researching, you know, what the Biden administration's national labor, labor relations board is going to do. And so I can have that conversation and, and, and I know about it so I can help my clients with it too. That's so cool. You are the guy, right? So it, and it sounds like, goal. yeah, <laughs> you're using this in, in like a multi, there's, there's, there's several purposes to this. Yes. You're going to interview this person, but you're using it. I don't say it's an excuse, but as like a uh, an impetus to say, okay, sure. I need to read more on this topic, and I'm about to talk to someone about it, so I might as well do it. And, and probably part of you is enjoying it as well because it's like something in your own industry you're learning, and so it's not really work, right? It's not really like right. oh, some people heard three to four hours of, them. oh my god, what are you doing? But no, you it's like you're going to do this anyways. But this is just it's kind of it's perfect timing because you're about to. In you know, talk to someone who also knows the topic, right? Yeah, and cool. I, uh, you know, I like you say, it, it helps me learn. And as entrepreneurs, how often do we take time independently to go teach ourselves something about our trade? I mean, about I what the, the core thing that the, you know that we deliver in services. And so when I can, you know, this is a, a way to hold a gun to my own head, yeah, uh, and then you know, make myself stop and. Uh, you know, not look for a shiny object for a few hours and, you know, chase some new big and just dig deep and, and do some, you know, deep learning on, on a topic to get ready for that conversation. What kind of things have you found? You've mentioned all different kinds of sources, YouTube and, and other, have you, have you found any ahas lately that to kind of stand out in your mind of, well, you know, I was, you know, you read the paper someone wrote, mm-hmm. or you saw another interview they gave on YouTube, and then you're like, "Oh, I should ask them about X, Y, and Z." Right? Yeah. The it's you know other podcasts that they've been on are always helpful. So I'll oh, just yeah? you know I'll jump on uh, Apple Podcast or Stitcher and just search for their name and see what they've got. And 
And especially that I can do that. I can listen to those while I'm driving, while I'm washing dishes or whatever I'm doing yeah. around uh, over the weekend, uh, running or whatever. And so that's, those are good there. And that also saves me from asking the obvious question. Cause after you've listened to a podcast, you know, two or three podcasts, somebody has been on suddenly you realize they could ask this question all the time. How do I ask a question that still delivers good information to, to, to my audience, but gives them a break because it's got to be a beating <laughs> just to have the, you know, the same questions. And so a lot of what I, you know, even if it's something that's a technical term, you know, a legal issue or something like that, let's get the philosophy and the basics out of it, but then let's have a convert. You know, that's the other big thing. I try to have a conversation around what's the practical side of this. How do we really implement this in a workplace or in a, in a company? And, and I'll throw out there, you know, well, here's what I, you know, here's what I've done or here's, you know, you know, give me, give me your feedback. And sometimes they'll say, oh, that's horrible. Don't do that. And, uh, and other times they'll <laughs> say, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good way to look at it or you might do this or whatever. And so I like it to be a conversation. I think that's, uh, but, you know, like I say, I've got to be really comfortable with the topic to be able to have a, a conversation. That's, that's not just me at really asking dumb questions for 30 minutes. Tell me about that too, because I'm fascinated. If, if you don't mind going with me on this one around the dumb questions, the obvious questions, uh, and, and I'm genuinely interested in this because sometimes I actually ha have tried to avoid listening to people talking on podcasts or even reading their book because then it's uh, in my in my mind, and I need your help with this. I'm thinking, well, if I already know the stuff, why would I ask the question? You know, right. and, and I guess in the same way, we we both don't want to ask a question the obvious question or the question you already know. Like I've already know, right. I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't need you here for that. I want, I want to ask you things that I, that I can't get anywhere else. Right. Well, and I don't mind asking a question that if I know the answer to it, if I think it's going to be something helpful for my clients, uh, it's to be honest, because I've done the research and I've been an HR guy for over 30 years, by the time I'm having the interview, I know the answers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I already yeah. did. It's just what I've done, but, uh, but I know also what the the more nuanced question is, or the question that's going to get a more thoughtful answer from from the guest, than and and hopefully more helpful to a, an yeah. HR practitioner than just oh yeah, you need to have an you know should every should every employer have an employee handbook? I mean that's an obvious question that, right. and I and I had somebody talking about employee handbooks not long ago, and I did listen to a podcast that she was on previously, and it was clear that this person who was at interviewing or didn't know anything and, mm -hmm. and it just had a, a list of generic questions they had drawn up and they were real basic. And it was, you know, it was, you know, HR day one kind of questions, not, not something that, you know, somebody with some experience and really trying to do something would ask. And so um, that's, I want to, you know, like I said, I want it to be really engaging for my, uh, for my guest. But the other reason it's important to me that it be engaging for my guest and, and we'll probably get into this is, I want them to have a really good experience because the main drive behind my podcast is less about building a listenership than me having a relationship, creating new relationships with those guests, those subject matter experts. Uh, so that's, that's so the whole reason the I do the podcast. Yeah. Okay. The, whole, the whole reason I started the podcast was, uh, you know, we, as far as background screening companies go, we definitely are one of the best, but we're also one of the most expensive. And so, you know, if I'm my ideal client is a really risk averse company that, you know, wants to make well informed decisions about the people they involve in their business, but and, and has the budget to do it. And and so um almost all of our business comes from referrals. Uh, mm. you know, so I'm I me speaking at conferences, but it's mostly trusted advisors, employment law attorneys, HR consultants, and our own clients making referrals. And so as we were looking a few years ago at how do we get more of those trusted advisor relationships, the podcast idea came up because uh, most of the trusted advisors outside of the Dallas Fort Worth area that I know are from me speaking at other conferences and I met them at a happy hour or I met, I sat in their session and, and or whatever at a, at a conference. Yeah. And so that, uh, so that's why we're doing the podcast. Cause I, I get to meet at least once a week with a, you know, for 30 minutes, 45 minutes uh, with a, a trusted advisor, you know, an expert in their area who, you know, can may not have a good relationship with somebody in my area. Now they know what I do and, you know, they've had a good experience. Hopefully they've got a, a, a 
a good podcast that they in video that they can use to promote their services. I make them look good in it. Uh, and uh, so that's, you know, it's really important to me that they have that experience because that's really the reason I'm driving the, uh, the podcast. Now for them, I want as many people to listen to the podcast as well. So we do stuff around that as well. But uh, you know, I'm, my main focus on there is, you know, is, is kind of backwards to, you know, not building listenership as much as building trust with my guests. Makes total sense. Uh, you and I are in the same. That's why I do mine. I, I love the connection, the relationship, and then, you know, content and all those things. Those are nice. It's nice, but right. it, it's that relationship. And, and so that makes sense then if that's the purpose. And if you can invest a little time to show people that they're important and to show people that they're worth your time, then right. hopefully they'll reciprocate and, and, and recognize right. the respect you're showing them. Yeah, that's how, that's what we do. So my, our whole marketing plan is Mike Coffee is a nice gay guy, you know. That's just that's the kind of the way it is, you know. It's just uh, that's uh, people trust me, and and you know, and then they trust the company. So that's what we're trying to build, and that's what the podcast has done for us in in the year and a, a little over a year that we've been doing it. Yeah, and I remember when we first started chatting, I remembered you talking about that. You know, some background checks are, and this is great. Anyone listening, if you are in the market. There's some background checks that that catch some things, but then they might miss a whole bunch of other things. And if, yeah, you might miss something pretty egregious. So even your story back then, you know, it, it stuck with me that, yeah, okay, you're going to pay more, but you're actually going to know all the things. It's not like you're going to have an oops later on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, so, yeah. So it's important that, you know, but we're not right for everybody. You know, it's like every, every company needs to own, own its own niche and know what, know who it serves. And, We've really zeroed in on them. The problem is they 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 in on LinkedIn or Facebook or you know they look like everybody else. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, you know, there's not a you know this this individual's personality being particularly risk averse is really hard to uh, to nail down through through analytics like that. So uh, I want as many people to know who we are, so that when that day happens, that they say, oh, we've got to do this part of our employee selection process better. Yeah. They think, oh yeah, we need to call my coffee. It's time to write, 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 you know, write the right check. And so, yeah, yeah, do it the right way. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes you need an ouch to make yeah. you, you know, change your your direction. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, it is, it is unfortunate. Talk to me about how you go from Mike Coffee is a nice guy to referral. How do you go from one to the other? That murky middle. You you've done a podcast together. They like it's you. Try I to like stay you. in kind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And try to stay in contact with them. I we we put out very little junk email stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, and so being a guest in my podcast is not going to get you on a junk mail list or anything like that. But I I keep my spreadsheet of all of the uh guests we've had and the topics uh on Google Sheets right in front of me. So every time I open my browser, it pops up. And I'm constantly looking for ways to connect back to those guests. And so if I'm reading a news article and I'm like, okay, this was uh, on employee engagement. This is a new study. I may shoot that, that person an email saying, hey, here's, a, here's an employment, uh, employee engagement related article that I just saw. Did you see the study? And, uh, and just kind of be intentional about striking up those conversations. It's really rare. And a lot of our, our you know, sales gurus that are friends of mine, uh, or on me to do it more often, you know, to ask for that direct referral. But mm. I've, you know, just me personally, I make the referrals for people I trust and they don't have to ask me for referrals. And so, uh, and I'm sure I'm driving all the sales guys crazy who are hearing this right now, but the, but the reality <laughs> is for me, I don't have to, I've just not, I've never done it that way. And yeah. so uh, I just, you know, hopefully they know Mike Coffee's a nice guy. He knows what he's talking about and I can trust him with my clients. He's not going to embarrass me. And, and those referrals come. So. Yeah. And, and it's good. And th those guys aren't on the show, so they can't say squat. Right. Yeah. Um, the difference between, I mean, I, I've heard this too, and I've never had a chance to chat with anyone about it. The idea of, uh, are you activating your referral network, right? Are yeah. you are you doing your BNI due diligence kind of thing? Or are you just, I mean, I kind of feel the way you feel where it's like, I'm just a nice guy. I'm here. I would know you, but I, I like the active way you're taking and you keep thinking about them, even if right. they're not thinking about you. Right. And just in yeah. top of mind, you know, because you never know when 
that employment law attorney or that HR consultant is going to be in a situation where somebody's got, you know, this company has got this employee and, you know, the, the police are there and the police are saying, okay, we, why did you hire this guy? Look at this <laughs> rap sheet. Why didn't you know about this? And that those are ideal for us. And that's a, you know, that's a, you know, a needle in a haystack situation between all the things that happen in an HR world. But when it happens, they want to fix it right then. And so I need those HR consultants, those employment law attorneys, and just those HR peers who know and trust me to to think immediately, oh, yeah, well, you know, you should call Mike Coffee. He's he's not going to be your $30, $50 background check that you're paying for right now, but he'll he'll prevent you from having that situation that you're dealing with right there. Yeah. And, and you'll sleep better at night. So. So is it enough to then just have the right people to have the conversation with the right people? And then you just are you, tell me about the keeping tabs of people. Are, are you religious about it? Are you continually sending out messages to people? I'm, I'm not as day? systematic as I probably should be. Sure. Uh, it's probably a few a week. Okay. Uh, and it's just as I go through my normal read, I'm a, I'm a, uh, just a, a avid news reader and I get, way too many uh, morning emails in my inbox, you know, whether it's Reuters or uh, HR related topics or whatever. And, uh, and I'll spend the beginning of in the first hour, hour and a half of every morning going through those and just reading things. Uh, and, and so, and if I read something that's interesting, my first thought is, is who, who should I share this with? Right. And, uh, and sometimes it's a client, sometimes it's multiple people. Uh, but so that's usually how it comes about. Um, I've, I've tried things that, you know, I've had over the years, you know, we, I've, I've spent my, my share of consulting dollars on people who, you know, help, you know, you should build this tickle file and you should make sure you touch this person at least once a month and you, and you yeah. may be intentional about it. I'm just, I'm your typical entrepreneur. I'm not that disciplined. You know, those systems yeah. are great for, you know, people who are good executors. I'm, I'm on the other end of that, you know, uh, you know, I'm interested in, in finding interesting things that, you know, and ideas and all of that. And then, but I want to share them. So that's yeah. what I'm looking, you know, so I think afterwards, and there's probably some folks that I should, that I should be more intentional about. And I probably should go back. And I don't, you know, if I was really going to be crazy, I would keep track of what I sent to who and when. Yeah. And it's all out there in my inbox, but I, uh, or in my outbox, but I, I don't, uh, I don't do it that way, but it's worked. I mean, it's, it's, worked. You know, it's, yeah. it's over my career. Uh, you know, we've, we've been, in, we've had to own the background screening company. It'll be 24 years in January wow. and, uh, and it's worked. I mean, we've built all our business that way. And so uh, there's always ways to be better about it, to do better. Uh, but the, uh, you know, I'm at the, you know, I'm at the point where what's working works really well. I just need, you know, if I can just meet more people and know more people yeah. uh, that, that'll be, you know, that'll serve us. And so, yeah. And I think I'm glad you mentioned that it's, it's worked and it's working part at the end, because I, I tend to feel maybe I just like solution bias or something, but I, I tend to feel a similar way to you. And I, I kind of want it to, I mean, to be honest, I, I kind of want to be friends with people and right. maybe we do business too, but I'd love to have you as a friend. And then exactly. first, you know, and so I, I'd love it to be natural. And, and I do have a, there's a, a really nice guy and I, and I, I like him. He's a realtor, but he's got that really well programmatic tickle thing. And God, if his voicemails aren't like, hello, KC Cheshire, you know, like yeah. <laughs> does the last thing, yeah. you know, I was just thinking of you and I wanted to know if there's anyone that, you know, is moving and needs to refer to a lawyer, uh, not a lawyer, to a, to a realtor in your area. Yeah. Please let me know. I'm always, you know, I hope you're having a great day. Say hi to Tina for me. Click, you know, like, right. it's just like, oh, and I've told him like, dude, you sound like a spam email. You sound like it's on purpose. Like it, it's too programmatic. Like say, Hey man, what's up? You know, like, and so I want it to come across much more natural, you know, even if I, I would like a business reason at the end of it, I still would like it to feel more personal. Like, yeah. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with, with, with doing it. I mean, there's no doubt, you know, the, the guy's not being disingenuous, which is good, but I don't want to, I don't want people to, I don't want people to ever see my, my name on an email in their inbox or my mm. number on a voicemail and think, ah, oh, crap, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that later. I, or that, that kind of thing where I know this is going to, you know, this is going to be like talking to my brother-in-law. Oh, you know, yeah. Send you know, me another one of those emails. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so, uh, 
that, so I just, you know, I try to make sure that I'm really adding value in those, in those, in those conversations. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, great to hear that too. Great to hear that approach and it's refreshing. It's not heavy. It sounds, it sounds fun. It sounds like you're having a good time doing it. Mike is a nice guy, but Mike's a nice guy because he likes people and he right. wants to be your friend and see if he can help you out. Well, and I'm one of the, one of the happiest people I know. And I think a lot of that has to do with just deep relationships, having a lot of relationships with people, uh, you know, and I'm COVID almost killed me because oh, I'm, you know, that getting out and being, being able to see people just wasn't ab- available. And, uh, in fact, my, uh, I've got a, a couple of buddies I have coffee with uh, a couple of times a week, at least, if not five times a week. And, Everything when all the coffee shops and everything here in Fort Worth shut down in, in March of 2020, we found out that the the Kroger over here, I live right by Texas Christian University, the Kroger was the Starbucks and the Kroger was still open. And so we would go to Starbucks, get a coffee, and then walk the aisles at Starbucks and just have our, our we had our, our guys time in the mornings uh, because that was how we, you know, I need that social interaction. And, and, uh, and so I'm... I'm act, I'm involved in way too many things, uh, you know, HR associations, Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce, the State Chamber yeah. of Commerce, and but that's because I enjoy being around people and it and and I think um, and I'm truly interested in people, so I'm not I don't you know feel like I just need to to go in and you know identify the problem I could solve for somebody right away or any of that kind of stuff that that uh, you know a lot of salespeople are doing. For me, it's just understanding where they're at, and what's going on, and uh, you know, do I have a resource that'll help them with whatever their top of mind problem is not necessarily convincing them they need to change their background checks, you know, or their drug screening right now. Right. Right. It's much more of a soft sell. It's a friend sell versus, uh, something else. Fantastic, man. Um, so good. Tell me about what happens when you start the show. How, how do you like to start the show? I've got a, a standard spiel. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I do an intro to the show. Yep. Good morning, HR. I'm Mike Coffey, and this is the podcast where I talk to business leaders about bringing people together to create value for shareholders, customers, and the community. And then I just go into whatever I, I intro the show, the, the episode, just talking about whatever the issue is. So, and okay. I've got that scripted out. Yeah, uh, that's the one thing I script is that three or four paragraphs where, you know, it's all, often whatever research I've just done. So, you know, like the one I did yesterday. The unemployment rate in September was X, and and so uh, as more and more employees are looking, or employers are looking for information source, you know, for retention source. That's this is why I script it because I don't, you know, right, uh, right, yeah. But uh, you know, are looking for uh, sourcing uh, places to find more employees. More they're looking at this or whatever it was, and uh, and I and I go through that stuff, and then I say, and joining us today to discuss that is Joe Smith, and Joe's. And, uh, you know, a lead recruiter at, at this company or whatever. Uh, and, and then we just, I, then I'll ask them like you did, just, you know, and I'll ask them one question to get the conversation going. And I'll have a list of list not of questions, them. but bullet points that things I want to, that we can cover. And we've got 30 minutes. Some of them go 45 minutes to an hour. And if the, if the guest has time, we'll go that long. Uh, mm-hmm. and they've got content. Sometimes, sometimes I'm squeezing, sometimes I'm squeezing that dry lemon for that last, just to get 30 minutes, you know, sometimes it's, uh, I just haven't found the way to connect with this person so that they're really giving a, a, a lot of extra information, but we just have a conversation. So we, I might get to half those bullet points. I mean, you know, yeah. and I always tell the guest, you know, here's what my opening question is. And here's a high, li- high level list of things we can cover but I'll follow your lead. I will let the episode go wherever you want it to go. So do you uh, tell them that on a prep call or do you, yeah. do, you do a prep no, call? I, no, we don't, we don't, my producer gets on with them with a prep call for the tech side, but uh, we do about five minutes before we start, we turn on recording. And that's when I just tell them, uh, and you know, I get that. And I'm sure you do too. I get the, the request for, Hey, can you send me the questions in advance? And that's usually when somebody's working with a publicist or something. Yeah. And, yeah. and I tell them, we just don't, ha- I don't have the questions. I couldn't tell you what they're going to be, but yeah. here's, I may send them, you know, here's four here's or five areas we might talk yeah. about, but I'll take their lead. And if they have things they want to really cover, email me that, email, email me that now. And in fact, on our booking form, uh, when, when they book, to, they select their, their booking time yep. or their recording time. I have, I I've got a place on there say, you know, what's your unique insight that you want to share L- list three or four or five bullet points around your topic. 
And that'll steer me a little bit in my research too. But I, I want it to be, you know, right in their wheelhouse. Uh, but, I, you know, I'll let them take it where they want to go. And and yeah. for me, that's, I'm really prepared, hopefully, for wherever they take it. Wow. Uh, tell me about the prep. So it's not a prep call, but you prep before the show. And the background is I always do the prep call, right? And then for fun, I don't know if you know uh, Natasha Miller. She's EO out California way. And uh, I'll, I can introduce you later. She's really a, yeah. quite, quite a fun person, super badass. Uh, she's like anti-prep call. So she won't ever do one or, or be on one or do one for her own podcast. Um, and she has a different goal in mind. It's not relationship, it's content, right? So, mm-hmm. oh, okay, that's what her thing is. But uh, because she skipped that, I thought, well, it'd be fun and meta to not do one and then talk about not doing one. But the very beginning, before we got started, I gave her like a, like a super quick mini spiel about what we're going to cover. And I realized I wasn't very good at it because I'm used to doing a 15 minute prep call like we did beforehand. So I was a little unpracticed about what do I need to get across to people right before we hit record? So I was curious, what are the things that you like to convey? You just met them for the first time and they got to know this. Yeah. I, first thing I do is read them. I read them the intro to the episode that I've scripted. And then I read them the intro for them that I've rewritten because, you know, you ask for somebody's bio and you get five paragraphs. And so, uh, uh, here's a, here's a hint for anybody who's a speaker, you've got a five or six paragraph bio, um, at the bottom of that put speaker intro with three sentences, three or four sentences. So that makes that saves the the whoever's introducing you from reading all that that nobody wants to hear anyway, and yeah. uh, and they could put that in you know if you're getting you know credit or in a, in a program or something they can put all that long stuff in there, but uh, so so I I reduce their um, their bio and I, but I read it to them to make sure it's what they want that they, you know that there's nothing jumping out that's really important but unless you went to Harvard or Yale or Stanford. Most people don't care where you went to college 20 years ago. So I don't, you know, I don't put that in there. I, I talk about, you know, what right. is, what about this person's background is relevant to this conversation we're about to have. So I read that to them and then I'll say, then I'll ask you this first question and tell them whatever the question is. And then I've got five or six uh, areas and these are the five or six areas we can talk about, but I will follow your lead. The conversation will be really directed wherever you, wherever you take it. And so don't hesitate. Uh, don't worry about talking too long. You don't have to talk in sound bites or anything like that. And uh, just uh, when uh, you know, when when I see the you know you've answered the question, I'll 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 throw another question out there or whatever. It'll be a normal conversation, right? And, yeah, and it's worked. Yeah, and it's works for works for me. Works for my style. I think no, that's yeah. probably the thing that everybody has to figure out is what's their style for. Like one of my favorite podcasters is Tyler Cowan, and. Uh, he uh, he goes in clearly with a, a list of thirty questions, and it's very little conversation. It's a lot more asking, but they're really well thought out questions. They're yeah. amazing questions, and uh, and Lex he Friedman goes in does and, that too. Just yeah. very yeah. Oh, smart question. But he almost reads it verbatim of like, right. here's this well thought out question. Yeah, and I've got no problem with that. It's just not my style. You know, it's just not how I do it. And so mine's a little bit more let your hair down and a little bit more conversational. Yeah, it's a little more dangerous too, if you think about it. You're kind of riding the lightning of the podcast because maybe you won't have a follow-up question ready or maybe you will and just sort of being open and into the conversation. And usually you find the question there. If you're like, oh, what's the next one? We'll just listen a little bit more and it'll usually surface. That's early on, you know, because I've done... I've moderated panels for the chamber of yeah. commerce or, or HR groups or EO and never really had a problem, but early on in the podcast, cause you're not in the same room, you're looking at each other on video. I found that I was having a hard time focusing on what somebody was saying. Cause I was worried about what my next question was. Yeah. And I've gotten, I think just as being more comfortable with the format, I don't have that issue as much. Um, and so it's just a conversation now. And often I'll look up or I'll see over in the screen, I'll see my uh, producer, you know, he's on, he jumps on those calls with us too. So he's on oh, the wow. third screen and, uh, and, he, and he may be doing something like that, you know, tapping his watch or something just so, Hey, you know, you know, you've gone 45 minutes or whatever now. And, uh, and I'll see what the enthusiasm of the guest seems like. And, uh, and I will ask them, I'll tell them this could be 30 minutes. It could go longer. It'll follow your, It'll follow you. So 
I'll get a sense when you're ready to go and, and we'll, you know, and rarely have I ever had a guest who needed us to get off. So if we've got stuff to talk about, we'll go. Uh, if it's, you know, if it's interesting and, and all of the other thing that's unique about our podcast is that the HR professionals who are listening, if they, if they're certified by the two big certifying bodies for HR pros, uh, they get credit for listening. We're one of the few podcasts that actually gives recertification credit. Uh, and so um, I've got to give them at least half an hour of it. Cause that's my promise to them, but sometimes they'll get in there and it'll be a 75 uh, or uh, 45 minute podcast. will give them three quarters of a credit instead of a half a credit. And, you know, cause one credit's an hour, sometimes I'll get a full hour. So it just kind of goes according to whatever the, uh, the guest, wherever the guest takes it, but I need to make sure that, uh, they're learning something out of the time and that, uh, that they're getting their, their, their the time on the credit. So right, we haven't really had any problem just doing it, but it's just been, that's been one of our hooks to get some 100%. good guests and some good and, and, and loyal listeners. So when I first heard about this, I saw it on the site and then we chatted briefly about it. I was fascinated by the idea that you can offer your listeners recertification credit, professional continuing education credit for listening to your podcast. Like, tell me where'd that idea come from and how hard is it to implement? Uh, the idea was, I, you know, I've been speaking at conferences and doing webinars for credit for years. Oh, and, okay. uh, and so I've, it's always been top of mind is, you know, it's hard for a lot of people to watch an hour webinar to make the time in their day to watch a recorded webinar. And, and, um, uh, uh, and so, and I've had people tell me, I listen to your webinars in the car on my phone when I'm driving to work or whatever. Oh. And, and, uh, that's cool. And so it was, it was kind of there when I started so when I started talking about seriously doing the, the podcast, I was like, yeah, we really just have to figure out how we get it uh, approved. And really there's only, I, th- I know of three other web, uh, uh, we, three other podcasts that give actual research credit for HR pros. And two of them are provided by the, the certifying bodies themselves. And uh, uh, the, another is a consult, uh, consulting firm. And so it was a little, it was, it was a hassle to set up because these two competing certification firms, uh, you have to get approved, get each episode approved, and it gets you know by that by that firm, by, uh, that organization. So you you have to get in their website, put in your topics, put in your learning objectives. So I can't get anything certified until after we've recorded it because I don't know what the content's going to be necessarily. Mm-hmm. And so we we do the show notes afterwards. My marketing coordinator goes through and listens to it and does the show notes draft. And I go through and clean it up and pick out the learning topics. They go put it in the system and, and, and then we get the recertification code. And then we upload it to uh, the video and audio to the feeders and stuff. And, we've, and I've got a little commercial in the middle of it someplace where my producer drops it and uh the little commercial is about how to get the research credit and uh and then it's, there's usually a you know, part of that commercial is about some other content on our website uh on not the good morning hr website but on the imperative info.com site which is our uh-huh. company so it's it, but it still points them to a webinar or something like that i'm not i'm really rarely selling Hey, we do really good background checks. You need to buy background <laughs> checks from us. Uh, right. I've got one in, in in that cycle that we cycle through that does that. But most of them are, uh, you know, uh, the business case for being a second chance employer. And so I've got a webinar in that. So I talk a little bit about that and say, and there's a whole webinar here, and it's good for research credit as well. You can mm-hmm. go to imperativeinfo.com and and click on webinars. And so, but we've got the process. So then they, they have to go to the good morning HR website and put the little code that I gave them in the, in the commercial Mm -hmm. into our website. And it spits out for them, the, the, uh, the information they need for, uh, their recertification purposes. And so, and we're getting, uh, we dropped, we dropped one this morning and, uh, by, by noon, I had 15 people who'd already requested the research credit. So that means, Just this morning, between the time it dropped and and noon, we'd had 15. And for most episodes, we end up with about 100, 150 requests for the research credit. And our listenership, you know, as you know, is is actual listenership is really hard to figure out. Yeah, totally. Uh, But but I can tell just from the interactions across 
we publish everything, the video that we publish on Facebook, uh, and then we, we put, uh, and YouTube, and we have uh, short versions of it that we drop in, in Instagram and LinkedIn. And so we, uh, you know, the interactions go up every month. So, you know, in fact, one of my guests told me he was at a conference in Florida as an attorney and he's, uh, he said uh, this uh, woman at the conference said, hey, you're on a lot of podcasts. You need to check out this one. This guy's really great. And he goes, oh, I'm actually recording with him next week. And so, no kidding. So that was good. So we're just a year out and people in you know other states are, you know, uh, are, are marketing for us. And so it's, it's great. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That uh, That's cool. And you make these connections that I, I, I wish there were more people that reached out to podcasters. Like I, like obviously Joe Rogan doesn't have time to talk to you. Right. right. But for, uh, for the smaller shows, it, it's fantastic. Have you, have you had any folks reach out and tell you about the show that they've listened to any listener? feedback? Oh yeah. I get, I get emails almost every week uh, really? uh, or LinkedIn. People reach out on LinkedIn. Hey, I heard this podcast and this is That's great. Awesome. I really enjoyed that. Just you know, three or four lines. And I always give them the same response. Oh, wow. I knew somebody was listening. It's you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then, I, but it's a good source for, you know, what other topics would you like to hear? And I always ask them that. And they're like, you know, um, you know, oh, I'm dealing with this at the office right now. What do you know about this? And I'm like, I know somebody who can answer that question. Now I'll put them in contact usually with that person directly, but then I'll follow up with that person and say, Hey, let's, let's get on the podcast and talk about this. Right. Let's get on there. Uh, do you ever have to keep uh well, I don't know. You, you start talking to someone offline at some point. It's like, no, 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 hold on. This is great for the show or, um, no, I don't, you're gonna have to I repeat don't, yourself. I don't. I don't ever feel like I need to do that. Uh, yeah. The uh, you know I'll um, if I if I if they cover something that we've talked about, uh, hopefully I've thought it's you know since we first talked about it, it's 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 marinated a little bit, and I've got a little bit more to add to it, and yeah. have a, you know. Uh, it's, but since we're talking about issues that. I'm supposed to be an expert in large, you know, if, if at a generalist level anyway, hopefully I can, I can, you know, cover a lot of that, but right. the, uh, but you know, I don't, I try not to beat people down with my stories multiple times, you know, but, but, you know, even if it is sometimes they, they'll bring it up, you know, when we were talking, you said this and, and tell that, you know, that story now. So I'll tell the story on my own podcast. Cause they, you know, they've, they've invited me, but um, you know, this, it's funny. Cause I was thinking that, I've had it only two times in in a year and a half or so that I've had to just dump a podcast. One where the guy would do nothing but sell for that hour or, or for that thirty minutes. It was just selling a service, selling a service, and I just said, Gosh. "We're not, we're not airing that." Uh, and the other was the guy was just he was so good in person. I met him at a conference, and we were uh, I sat in a session at a conference, and it was really good. And then we happened to be in line together at the buffet at, at lunch. And I got to talking to him and he was just so personable and interesting. And as soon as he got on, God, I hope he didn't see this podcast, uh, but as soon as he got on the, on, on definitely the screen, not that popular. He, won't he see was, it. he was dry. It was Melba toast, man. And, and he just wow. had nothing. It was yes, no answers. And I couldn't dry him out. And uh, he just, it was weird. I, you know, maybe he had a bad day or whatever. He, I, he didn't seem nervous, but you guys had you already chatted. You already knew each other. Yeah. But people responded, you know, technology True. different ways. And True. I've heard from plenty of employers who say that their employees who were really personable in person, now that they're remote, uh, just can't interact at the same level on video. And, uh, you know, there's uh, there's some yeah, of us who are just exhibitionists. And I don't care what the format is. I'll get up on the table and, and strip for you if, you know, go. if, if you're interested. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you know, it's that little tiny red button blinking in the left of the Zoom. It used to be bigger and scarier. And now they hide it in the cloud. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it, it's like you're fine until the lights go on and the curtains open. And then it's like, oh, God, you know, people are listening. But, you know, it's not it's not going to be in the world. Maybe if right. you're on Rogan, you start messing up. and You know that like, oh, yeah, that would be a whole hundred million going to yeah. hear you sound like an absolute idiot. Right. That'd be a whole different level. Yeah. Yeah. Diff different. Uh, different but judging by. About. Judging by some of Rogan's guests, some people don't really seem to be bothered even being an idiot. Well said. There was one gal that kept the answering questions by saying, 
Well, you know, it's in it's in my book. I wrote about it in my book. Oh yeah. And eventually, yeah. Joe had to say, "Yeah, that's nice, but could you, you just tell me? Just share uh, me some information. Yeah. Could you just tell me what's in your book? I don't have your book right here in front of me. You know. Could yeah. You Rogan just- doesn't exactly seem like the guy who's going to go read all those books of all his guests. And right. But you'll and- you'd be surprised. He's read some of them. You know, yeah. and, which I find fascinating because he probably reads more the more of them than I do. Um, but yeah, like my exhausting. approach is like, yeah. don't read it until afterward. Then I want to read it. Hmm. So recertification, fascinating. I guess it, it matters for certain professions. It's not right. all professions. It's. And because, you've got to have a recertifying body that'll allow you to do audio body. or yeah, in that way, because, um, you know, a friend of mine who's an attorney said, uh, he thinks the bar would never allow uh, continuing legal education to be in a podcast. It would have to be a webinar or something much more structured than, uh, than just a podcast, but you never know. And until some, uh, some attorney decides they really want to do that and goes and tries to convince a bar, you know, you know, their yeah. state bar to accept it, uh, you know, you don't know. And so. I think it'll happen at some point. I mean, you, you're either listening or not listening to the webinar. It's the same right. thing. So right. we'll see. Well, I'd love to shift a little bit in, in, in talk talk past, present, future kind of thing. I'd love to know if all these things that are working well, what's your biggest challenge with podcasting? Biggest challenge. Huh? That's interesting. The, uh, for me, it's uh, what I, well, the one thing I, I want to do better in 2023 for sure is, is plan out uh, conversations around specific times of the year. Like, um, I, you know, we're going to do in, in January and it's the first time we've really thought planned ahead. Uh, we're going to do HR new year's resolutions. And so I'm going to talk to, uh, I think there's five weeks in January of 2023, five Thursdays. And I think, and we're going to talk to HR leaders about uh, what are they going to, what's their resolution for their professional practice this year? What do they want to do in their organization or whatever? Uh, and, and, kind of cover it that way. So yeah. I want to do more of that. And also there's a few big conferences I attend every year. And I think I'm going to try to, we've, we've partnered with a few of them in the past, uh, but it's usually very last minute because I, I just haven't planned it out. So the conferences that, you know, the, you know, beginning of September and in late July, I'm reaching out saying, Hey, we should do a series of podcasts with your guests with your speakers as my guest in advance, yeah. and you can use it to promote the pod, uh, the the conference. But when you do that four weeks, five weeks in advance, it's not enough time to get those guests scheduled and and get them all done. So we're we're rushing it. So that's the other big thing is for the especially for the big conferences that I can usually get it. You know, I should be able to get three or four good guests out of you know have those so that they're prepared and they're dropping the month, you know, one at a time, once a week, uh, the month before that conference. So they can really use it to promote uh, the conference and uh, yeah. recording so, things in advance, having themes, yeah. planning it. Yeah. Planning yeah. those themes that tie in, but not just a the theme, but having a the theme tie into a date and, and it just makes it more practical for your listeners. And, right. I, and that sounds, that sounds great. I, I love that. Um, and, and, you know, that was actually even uh, the second question, which ties into this, which is, you know, what does it look like for your show uh, 50 episodes from now? Because oftentimes 50 is about a year worth of weekly podcasting mm-hmm. and things can change and morph. And so if we were to chat, you know, 50 episodes from now, what what do you want that to look like? What do you want the show to be? I I think I the the I'd like to have the listeners who are the more fee- more interaction with the listeners. I, I like that's why that's how I'm kind of measuring real success is that these people are engaged enough to shoot me an email, tell me what they think about it, um, drop me a line on LinkedIn or whatever, and I, th- that's just an endorphin rush for me. And yeah. so, and it, this meant somebody Definitely. enough that somebody took the time to do that, you know, to write a two minute email or something. And so that's that that's what success would be for me is to have a lot more of that. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd love, you know, when an episode drops on Thursday morning to have, uh, you know, 15, 20, 25 emails that, that afternoon saying, Hey, I thought this guest was good. Or he said this and I, I'm, you know, I think he's full of crap or, or whatever. And so, uh, that's the other thing I'd like to have, uh, more conversations. We don't really have 
conversations on, on the good morning HR website or anything like that, mm-hmm. where people aren't posting and having, and we haven't really promoted that to the ability to do that, but I'd like to either through that or, uh, through, uh, some of the HR related Reddit groups or Facebook groups or things like that, LinkedIn groups, uh, to pick one or two of those probably in the next year and, and be more intentional in making sure I try to start conversations around some of those topics, uh, on, on some of those groups. Wow, I love that. Makes total sense, man. Uh, you are a gentleman and a scholar. Where can people connect with you if they want to reach out? Maybe they, they, they just want to pick your brain on the background checks or HR, or maybe they just loved what you had to say and they wanted to connect with you. Where, where are good places for that? Uh, the, on the background check side, imperativeinfo.com and on the podcast, it's goodmorninghr.com, but Mike coffee, S P H R on LinkedIn. Okay. You can always reach out to me that way. And that's a great way to, uh, to find me. And, uh, the, uh, and if you want to see me do yoga and stuff like that, you can find me at Mr. Coffee, MR coffee on Instagram. But I mean, that's, if you, if you follow my Instagram, I promise it's, it's going to be a lot of yoga and uh, me eating out and having dinner, you know, going out with my wife and kids. And so if you want to see what I'm eating for dinner, go to Instagram. All right. Mr. Coffee, one word. Uh, M-R-C-O-F-F-E-Y. Yeah. You are. My initials are M-R. My parents actually named, gave me the initials, Mr. Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> So one of my first, my first job, uh, corporate job was in aerospace and we had the name badges and, and it had your t- first two initials and your last name. So I was Mr. Coffee on my, my name badge. And, uh, it's, uh, oh, so everybody goodness. just called me coffee. And today there's still a ton of people who just call me, Oh, Hey, Mr. Coffee. And yep. I'm, I'm like, okay, you're, you know, you're my age. I'm not Mr. to you, <laughs> but, uh, right. they, they still do right. it. Yeah. Mr. Coffee. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, well, man, thank you so much for coming on here. I have literally had such a blast. I don't know if you looked at the, the clock. We've just warped through an hour. It's been so wow. much fun. Uh, so I really Super, appreciate you coming you. on here and sharing your, your secrets. Oh, it was fun. Well, I don't know if there's any secrets, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me, Casey. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And for those listening, if you learned something and I freaking know you did because I literally have two pages of notes over here front and back. I literally have run out of space. I'm just, I always show the camera because people think I'm bullshitting sometimes, but I've literally have run out of space uh, taking notes. But if you learn something like I did, share this with one person, that podcaster who needs to get a little boost there, get a little help. Maybe some of the techniques we talked about, um, the idea of recertification credit. If you're in that kind of an industry and you can, you can pull that off by all means, do that. And then send us a note and let us know how it went. Uh, and with that, Mr. Coffee, thanks again, sir. Thanks Casey. Have a great one. All right, everyone. This has been another exciting, so informative episode of creating the greatest show. We will see you all next time. And next time doesn't have to be next week. Life's too short and we have way too much to talk about. Find show notes full of takeaways, lessons, and links at creatingthegreatestshow.com. For more information on launching your own podcast or working with us to produce your existing show, come on down to the big tent at ringmaster.com. Until then, friends, whatever you do, do it with all your might. Work at it, if necessary, early and late, in season and out of season, not leaving a stone unturned and never deferring for a single hour. That which can be done just as well now. P.T. Barnum.